This talk is about uh, calculating certain optimization problems related to robust price bounds using methods from the area of generative adversarial networks. First of all, it's based mainly on joint work together with Luca de Gennaro Aquino and partly also on joint work with Gudmund Pammer and Julio Bacco. First of all, what is the idea of robust pricing? If you observe certain prices on the market, make some assumptions about the market structure, like about a certain stock, then instead of fixing one model, like the Black-Scholes model, you instead consider all the models that are consistent with the observed prices and assumptions. And then uh, if you want to evaluate a new financial product that may depend on the stock, you can uh, calculate the highest and lowest possible prices among those models, which give you the robust price bounds. One example of such a robust pricing approach is the Martingale optimal transport problem. Here, uh, one makes two key assumptions for the risk neutral distribution, distribution Q of a stock process S1 up to ST. First is that models are consistent with European call and put prices given on the market. And the second is that there's no arbitrage by dynamically buying and selling the stock. The first one, if there are sufficiently many such options on the market means that we know the one-dimensional marginal distributions. And the second one means that the stock process is a martingale under this uh, distribution. So for instance, in two time points, how does this optimization problem to calculate the highest possible price among such models look like in the martingale optimal transport problem? Well, we know the two one-dimensional marginal distrib distributions, but we don't know their joint distribution we only know that it has to induce a martingale. So to calculate the highest possible price, we calculate the supremum over all such measures Q of this integral F dQ, where F may be the payoff of some financial derivative we want to evaluate. Of course, initially, uh, this optimal transport problem did not include the martingale constraint and was coming from a very different direction. But nowadays, uh, optimal transport and related problems found applications in many different areas. Um, in particular, as mentioned, this martingale constraint is just one particular aspect. There are many different variations of the optimal transport problem, but they all have in common that the optimization problem we wish to solve is of this form that we take the supremum over some set of measures Q of an integral FDQ. This talk is really about a numerical method to solve such an optimization problem. And uh, in any case, however you want to solve such a problem numerically, you need some way to represent probability measures with finitely many parameters. What one can do, of course, is use discretization. We go over to a finite state space. We can parameterize densities. But in this talk, I want to talk about um, using a representation as a push forward measure, where the push forward map is a neural network, which will then uh, lead to these, uh, this connection to a generative adversarial network. And this is illustrated here. So the parameterized measures Q xi we work with are given as the push forward measure of some latent distribution theta under a push forward map T xi, where T xi is some neural network with parameters xi. Okay, so applying this approach uh, with such a push forward parameterization for this problem P leads to a min max uh, problem. How is this done? Well, we make this push forward par um, parameterization approach. Of course, first of all, we represent these measures Q as the push forward map of some latent distribution theta under the map T. Here, T is just some arbitrary uh, measurable map. The problem here is, of course, to enforce the constraint that Q, this measure Q represented by the mapping T, is in the set Q. Um, we have to additionally use some kind of inner infimum problem. And this inner infimum problem uh, can be chosen by the, uh, a variational representation for the set of measures Q. This is, of course, an assumption, but it's satisfied for uh, problems like optimal transport, martingale optimal transport, and so on. This uh, 
form of the objective function is not so important here. I just want to quickly show it, of course, the initial function f uh, from the problem and also this latent distribution theta come in here. The important thing about this reformulation as a sub inch problem is that now both supremum and infimum are optimization problems over sets of measure, uh, functions. Uh, so we can approximate these functions by neural networks of a fixed size. And doing so, we really end up in the setting of generative adversarial networks. Um, here, this eventual formulation uh, is often also seen as a zero sum game between the functions T and the functions uh, function H, where the function T is seen as the generator network because it generates solutions to our optimization problem. And the function H is like the discriminator network because it tries to discriminate whether the candidate solution satisfies the given constraints or not. Now, having this reformulation is nice because we have uh, just finitely many parameters we have to find uh, or optimize for. But of course, it's uh, a non-convex concave optimization problem, which is still very difficult to solve. And just doing like, trying to solve this directly using like alternating gradient descent ascent type methods just doesn't work. We find one reason for this, uh, this instability, which is that inherently this neural network approximation um, isn't really well defined. It's uh, in game theoretic terms, the game is a lot easier for H in many situations. And it often even holds that PM is simply minus infinity. Since P is of course well-defined, it's not always minus infinity. This just means that the neural network approximation PM of P is not justified in any sense. So what do we do? Well, we have two resolutions. The first one is purely numerical. I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but we adjust or we apply some concepts from generative adversarial networks. For instance, changing the optimization procedure for updating the parameters of the network T and also changing the neural network architecture. So these are purely numerical adjustments. They increase the computational complexity. So the runtime is increased, but also the training process gets more stable with these methods. Uh, the second resolution, however, is the main part of our work and roughly intuitively is to make the game harder for H. So we want to make it harder for H to push the value uh, to minus infinity. And we do this by adding a certain penalty um, to the objective function. We use two approaches here. The first is a kind of gradient penalty related to Lipschitz functions and Wasserstein distances. And the second is a convex penalty related to uh, F divergences, uh, relative entropy and so on. Uh, concretely, this leads to two problems uh, with the gradient penalty. It leads to the problem PML, where the functions H are restricted to be L Lipschitz, and uh, the problem PM Xi, uh, PM Xi with this convex penalty. And uh, our main theoretical result is that under sufficient regularity of the problem P, here really this neural network approximation no longer has the problem that it almost always evaluates to minus infinity. In many cases even, for example, here in the case I, we find that for large enough networks, the approximation error is even zero. And this isn't just a uh, theoretical justification for the approximation by neural networks, but it also really helps numerically. So here we see three, um, three graphs showing the, um, the objective value during the training of the parameters for the neural networks without penalization, uh, without a penalty, we saw that it doesn't converge at all. And using this convex or Lipschitz penalty, uh, we see that it converges very nicely. So just very quickly, because I'm running out of time, but I just want to say that this method can very nicely be adjusted to solve uh, causal and adapted Wasserstein problems. Uh, the key insight here is that the constality constraint can directly be encoded through a suitable neural network, network architecture, 
So we do not have to enforce the causality constraint through this variational approach, but it can directly be included by a suitable network architecture. Um, for the bicausal or adapted version, this is a bit more difficult, but um, it can also be uh, incorporated with a few tweaks. All right, this is it. Thank you.